Now this is something else I wanted to show you. Uh, generally, objects in Vectorworks, it, this, this is an extrude, so this has a number of texturing types, but since it's in a RDN situation, it's a strange shape, it's not a good example for simple texture mapping. So hang on one second. There we are. This is an extruded rectangle. It's about as simple as 3D objects get in Vectorworks. And, but even it has uh, what are called parts. So in the rendering tab of the Object Info Palette, under the Part tab, right now it's set to Overall. So if I pick a texture from here, it's going to apply it. Uh, let's pick something that's bricks. Let's pick something directional. And of course, if we pick our simple plastic, yeah, the, the, it'll be the same color. Transparent, transparent textures are easy. You don't need to worry about their mapping almost at all. Now we want a grid or wood to show direction. There we are, okay. So you can see here, uh, the wood grain goes this way on the top and this way on the sides, and of course the bottom, it goes this other direction. But what if I wanted to change the side, but leave the top alone? If I simply edit the texture, leave all these settings alone, and change the rotation value to 90, the top texture reorients as well. But if I wanted to keep that going this way and then change these textures, I have to separate the types of mapping I'm doing. So we'll set this back to normal. Now remember another thing, you can edit the texture and alter this as well. But if you edit the texture, you're gonna edit that mapping direction for every object that uses that texture. So as much mapping as you can do per object, generally the easier life is gonna be. Uh, so in here, we'll change this up here at part. We'll change this from overall, then we'll click top. So currently now we have overall and top. So the top part, which is just this in this situation, is being mapped separately, but the bottom and sides are now going to overall. So if I change, leave this set to top, and I change this to asphalt, for instance, just the top becomes asphalt, the rest of it stays wood. And now since I have the top selected, I can change the top manually. I don't see how the other sides don't map. I can change just this bit of it. And if I go down to rotation, eh, that's not a very obvious, but yeah, see how I can change the rotation for just the top? Many objects have individual part settings for something like this, but if I have a more complicated object, here, I'll quickly make a more complicated object. Oh, and just to show you, if I go to sides now, I can also change this to sides and then give the sides another texture yet again. That's probably a bad choice, there we are. So now I have the bottom, the sides, and the top are all different textures here entirely and they can be mapped individually. However, if I want to go back and have everything use one overall texture, that wood texture, revert to overall. So now the sides, which we just changed, have reverted to overall, and then I would select top, and then hit revert to overall. Now all of the textures are using the overall texture, and will all map the same way. But if I have a more complicated shape, or if I want to map this side separately from this side, here, I'll show you what I mean. Click get a sphere. And we'll add these two objects together. So now, look at this mapping type. There's these flat planar faces, and then there's this sphere, which is not currently mapping in a way we would want. So if we change this to auto-align plane, it's going to try this again. Now, if I want to map the sides, if I go to part, oh, I don't have sides anymore. That's because this object is no longer a simple extrude. It's a solid addition. So while the texture controls are on the, the whole object as a total, if I edit the guts of the solid edition, I can't texture these individually and then leave the solid edition. It still needs to have these texture settings. So there's a way to get around this so that you have complete control over which facets you map one way and which you map another, but you can't keep it as one object. Normally what you have to do is extract the faces from it. And that is most easily done by going here to extract. I will set this to face mode. And see how it highlights this in red? I could also highlight just the spherical face, which is something you'd probably very commonly do. I'll highlight just this ex face here, and I'll choose to extract it. So now you see, see this, this, this look here? When you see this, this is called Z fighting. This means that there are two surfaces, in this case, a NURB surface, which is here, and this box's face, which are exactly coplanar. So they're exactly on the same side of each other. So I will simply nudge that out of the way. Go back to a view here, whoops. There we are. And now you can see I have a separate face object here. I can select this individually. So now I have a separate face that I can map however I like, but it's just gonna sit over top of this other one. There's no way, unfortunately, to map it while it's still one object. This is just the main way of getting around that. So now I can change this here. We'll pick maple bark, that works just fine. 
that scaled entirely too small. Scale that up. And you can see now I can control just that section and it appears as if it's on the face of that object. This is still just a, a, a fake grab. So if I pull this away, this is just a fake surface. But for interior renderings and all intents and purposes, it will look very much the same. I want this to be improved so that you have a little more control over it. But for now, this is the easiest way to do that. And you can see we could do this for the sphere face as well. Select this, extract it. Z fighting, you can see. For spheres, it looks a little different. If you simply go to top, bump that away a smidge. Actually bump that away two smidges. And you can get more exact than this. I'm just eyeballing it for a quick demo. There, that's close enough. And if I nudged it further away or scaled it up slightly, if it's, it means to go in all directions, that'll work as well. So now this we can easily map again. If that is, oops, nope, that's transparency. We don't want that. There we are. And you can see how this pivots to the tip here. Generally, this kind of object you would want to map. Uh, you, generally, you want to map this as spherical and that'll give it more control over what the actual texture looks like. And you can change the texture here individually, separate from these objects. So I could extract all these faces if I wanted to and give them all individual textures. That's just the general way you do an alternative to regular texture mapping on a given object. For instance, if I go here and I go to the attribute mapping tool, if I select this object, which is the whole extrude, I have to change it to a particular plane or sphere mapping. So I can map that but then look, it's doing that same thing that we were seeing in the other video. We were seeing the stretching across one side. So once you have this kind of mapping, there's not a lot you can use to control it. So generally you leave the source object on auto align plane. And if you need to override the mapping of an individual face, you simply use the extract tool, pull that face off and then give that a different texture. So you don't have to use that again. It will result in a separate object though. So if I had, whoops. So if I had forgotten and not put these objects together, they will come apart very easily. So if I had just moved one of these and not thought about it, oh, I'll just move this object, it breaks down. So generally what you want to do is you can group these. Once you're done with it, you can just group them and make your life easy. Then you don't have to worry about it. You can move it all as one unit. Everything will snap properly. Everything will rotate as you expect. You don't need to do it anything differently than that. That's just a quick primer on alternative methods of texture mapping. Uh, you don't need to do this, of course. And for other more complicated objects like windows and doors, you can map their textures. I will go over this just briefly. For a door object, you can control those via class. So since you can't do mapping in a class yet, and then classes here, these are the classes that will also use the individual parts of the door. So if you need the jam to run in a different direction, you can duplicate your texture in the resource browser make a version that's rotated 90 degrees and then your jam horizontal portions and vertical portions you can map with the different textures so that you can align it that way without having to break the door apart.